All right. So, today, uh, we are here to chat about, uh, what did we decide? It was um, flagship, flagship titles. titles. Yeah. Flagship titles. Did you have a, did you, uh, did you look into anything much or not, not too much or? A little bit here and there, just, uh, not like a bit of an idea. Like generally just a little bit of everything from, uh, like Nintendo, a bit of Sega and, uh, just every like PlayStation and Xbox and everything else. Yeah. And, uh, it's, it's the main ones really. Yeah. So, so when it comes to a flagship title, uh, I want to start with the obvious question. What is your favorite one? Ooh. That's that's actually a pretty good question. Uh, to, right as of right now, probably uh, probably God of War. I would have to say God of War and, mm -hmm. and maybe Horizon. Oh, did you play the new one? I did, but I still uh, I've been slacking on finishing it. Damn, I really want to give it a shot. I'm just I'm terrified to buy it from a PS4 because every time I turn it on, it's, it's, it's like a fucking launch pad. It wants to take off. Jesus. Yeah, no, it's, uh, how do I put it? I'm not having the best experience on the PS4. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I definitely say wait till you get to a PS5, because as I've been playing it, like, I no word of a lie, I'll be literally in the right in the middle of a fight, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden a loading screen will pop up. <laughs> and then it'll go away, and then I'll be right back in the fight doing the exact same motion I was doing. So it completely throws you off from the whole heat of the battle and everything. Okay, for sure it'll do I that, man. I don't know if it's the same thing on uh, what's it on PS Five or the newest gen consoles. I, I, I'd imagine they'd be running a lot better. But yeah, that yeah. that that kind of turned me for a little bit. <clears throat> Flagship titles definitely have um, a lot of sway in the industry, and mm. for a long time, and they still do. Because, like, for instance, I'm a person that's actually considering buying a PS5 in November just so I can mm. experience God of War properly. Yeah. You know? I, I feel you. I feel you. So, like, <clears throat> for anybody listening, like, a flagship title, in case, if, if for any reason you're not sure what that is, it's basically a title that's released exclusively on a platform or service um, in order for you to encourage using that service or platform. Right, so like if you want to play a Mario game, you run to Nintendo. If you want to play, if you wanted to play a Metal Gear, you'd run to PlayStation. Um, if you wanted to play Halo, you'd get an Xbox uh, or Microsoft account. You know, Gears of War. <clears throat> Sorry, Gears of War. Gears of War. Uh, like, see, that's a franchise that I missed out on completely because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have an Xbox. I never got into it. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's out on PC. I should probably look into that because I heard I, I, Gears of War has a great story. I believe it is now on PC, and and yes, it's it's a lot of fun. Like if you liked uh, some of the grandioseness of like Halo, picture that, but just more up in your face kind of action. Whereas Halo was kind of more subtle and kind of mysterious in its own uh, in, in its delivery. Man, all I remember from Halo was that fucking mission when you meet that in Halo One where you meet that blue floating. Oh, what? Wait, are you talking about the flood? Well, you, well, yeah, it's the same level where you meet the flood for the first time. Or the, um, oh my god. I, Is it 343 Spark? I think, so, what, I think that's what it was. It's been so long since I played it. But, but I, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. The, the level, floating... It ruined the game for me. Oh my god. It's just level, floor it, after floor of the same map, same design over and over and over. It's like, are we ever going to be done? <laughs> It's. It was definitely one of the weakest points in the game. It definitely set up set a, the whole like tension kind of side of things, and yeah. I, I I felt generally spooked out playing it for my first time. Yeah. Or creeped out, but it just dragged. I, I definitely. <coughs> it was, yeah, because I remember you you would uh, you come into this hallway and you just see blood everywhere, and it's it's not just your soldiers; it's also the Covenant. And you're like, huh. <laughs> And the music was this? eerie, and yeah, and like it was. I, I, if I remember in the marketing, it wasn't advertised at all that the flood were going to be in the game. I think so. You're like, wait, what is doing this? <laughs> yeah, no, it was. It was definitely a whole switch to everything. 
Yeah. But yeah, it was it 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 took a while to get through that whole section. Yeah. But anyways, um, so yeah, so so in a nutshell, that's what flagship game, uh, flagship titles are, and uh, so Danny, you, you, D, P, sorry, PT, <laughs> <laughs> you said your your favorite was um, right now is the God of War series, uh, and if I had to pick one, uh, I would have like. I'm I'm going based off <clears throat> what pushed me to buy a PlayStation, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna have to say it was probably the Metal Gear franchise. Oh yeah, that pushed me into getting into PlayStation. But the one that kept me on PlayStation was Uncharted. Okay, I really, yeah, I, can, I really I can enjoyed the Uncharted franchise, and uh, even though they're very linear, I thought it was a lot of fun, and uh, I it, it was it was. Uncharted was actually like so. Well, like when I was playing the Metal Gears, I would be like, "Ha ha, fuck you, Xbox, you can't enjoy this." You know, stupid Nintendo with your graphics from '87. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and um, yeah, no kidding. So and that's how I that's how I felt back then. That's how I used to be. Uh, but it was when Uncharted came out and I played it. Where it was the first time I said to myself, "Like, ah, oh, shit, man. There's so many people that won't experience this. That sucks." You know. Yeah. And. Uh, I think it's, uh, I, I think it's uh, an interesting point to talk about because flagship gaming, in a sense, um, created giants out of these companies. You know, imagine Ninten- uh, Nintendo without Mario. You know, yeah, you can't. You know, imagine Master Chief without Xbox. You'd be like, oof, that would be a complete different direction. You know. Yeah, no so kidding. Like, it, it it turned these things in it turned these organizations into giants. These titles, these characters, so it's amazing for the industry, and it made so many memorable moments for so many gamers. <clears throat> but holy shit, it divided us also at the same time. I, I I gotta be honest, not me anymore. I'm on board with the yo. You release it on everything <laughs> from now on. Oh yeah, no kidding. But it did Everyone... create um a, 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 like a like the console wars. It's what's it's what caused it, right? Yeah, and uh, I think it's an interesting dynamic to see uh, how it how it's playing out because nowadays I feel like um, you don't you don't see it as much. Like Uncharted's coming out on PC, The Last of Us is coming out on PC, God of War is on PC. It's not necessarily multi platform, but I mean at least they're branching out. You know, the, there's less exclusivity. I feel like. I feel like they almost kind of, kind of have to at this point, just because everyone's. I feel like now nowadays, compared to maybe years ago, people have slowly got themselves back into building a PC and getting themselves that kind of go, going that kind of route, and PC gaming is kind of. <coughs> I, I wouldn't say it's died, but it's definitely it's definitely fallen short compared to console gaming. Console gaming became. Like huge, just because like I can sit in the comfort of my own living room and play everything. Well, I, I think one of the issues is that when it comes to PC gaming, they limited them, they limited themselves to keyboard and mouse. Everything yeah. turned into an RTS. Everything turned into a you know point and click on this. You know, on PC, what was ever exclusive yeah. on PC? <clears throat> yeah. And if you wanted like, and of course, first person shooters, um, but everything else in between, um, man, you. You had to get a console if you wanted to experience like Ghost of Tsushima, or uh, if you wanted to experience, yeah, yeah. action games, platform platformers. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So to me, and I, I, we I, we've had this argument when because mm. I, I was a I was a console gamer for a long time, didn't have a PC, and then uh, you guys finally banded together and got me one, or got me some parts to build one uh, for my birthday, and I finally yeah. got one, and we were arguing saying. Yeah, man, PC is not the shit. Y'all don't have anything great on this platform. Um, I think I'm going to stick to consoles. But, you know, slowly as time went on, I kind of made a shift there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think Tarkov took a lot of your life there. Tar- yeah, Tarkov. Tarkov, Tarkov uh, yeah. I, I don't see how that's even possible on console. <laughs> <laughs> so, um yeah, uh, and, and, and also it's just, like, when it comes to PC, it's just, it's so easy. Like this, like Discord. Yeah. You know, have this running in the background, you're playing a game, you know? Uh, something as simple as that is something, it's, 
it's a pain in the ass on consoles, right? Um, so PC had the edge in every in every aspect there. Yeah. Um, in terms of accessibility and the ease it, that it, that that it created to, in order to play with your friends and that kind of stuff. Um, but it didn't have those titles. Didn't have those exclusive titles that consoles had, and that's why they sell, man. Well, it's it, it's a little bit a, 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 Jesus. It's a little bit to do with that. It's also going to do with trying to produce uh, like PC related games because they have to put in like a lot more extra work for a PC like title, especially something like uh, like you said before, like God of War. Even if they want to do Breath of the Wild, a bunch of these other action and platforming games, like controller still. Then this is the only way I could actually play like an action game, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. like nowadays, this become like it's easy for you to take your PS PS4 or your PS5 remote and like plug it into your PC. Where beforehand, that kind of peripheral was, for the most part, kind of hot garbage. Yeah. yeah. So it, it would they, work if I'm not mistaken. But you needed like you needed like a degree in computer science and. You had to risk yeah. downloading a virus in order to get it to function properly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's it. So, like, when they finally started to make uh, your like your PS4 remote or your Xbox remote like compatible with PC gaming, and then they started working around putting stuff towards PC, I think that's when uh, when there's been a bit of a big shift. But just making a PC game in general has always been. Uh, it's, it's not difficult, it's just you have so many more variables, whereas like a console, it's a straight, you, you know the hardware that's in there, you know the limitations. I mean, you could push those limitations and figure out ways that's how they've gotten to the to certain points with gaming. It's the same thing with Crash Bandicoot. They had to literally uh, mess around with a lot of the code and uh, inside of it, they had to mess around with how much memory they were pulling from the console in order to get that game to work. Mm-hmm. But like they were, you're set on a on a small whatever the system was, whatever the specs for that system is. With PC, there's a lot more variables. Like your PC is completely different from mine. You, that, I think you went Intel, no? I did. Yeah, so you're Intel, and I and I'm AMD, and just those two factors alone change how how everything from your PC works. So like you can like I've seen people who will play a game and uh, on Intel they'll have zero problems and then run the same thing on an AMD PC and it just can't get it to work. You just get run yeah. into all kinds of issues and problems and I, vice versa. And the other thing I feel is like um, when I look at like a PC exclusive game, or at least temporarily when they were back in the day, like maybe I don't have enough uh, experience with PC games yet because I'm not new to it anymore, but I'm still. I'm still dabbling, right? Nah. Yeah. I, I've spent more time as a console gamer than I have as a PC gamer, basically. Yeah. And when I think of PC exclusive titles, like I'm thinking of Diablo, I'm thinking of StarCraft, I'm thinking of of games like that. You know, that's the first thing that comes to mind: Age of Empires. And when I look at the quality of those games versus mm. the quality of the games that I get in in consoles, um, it just I feel like there's a huge disparity. Uh, it's there's uh, uh, the convenience of keyboard and mouse for RTSs has always been uh, completely superior compared to consoles. I remember trying to play what was it, Command and Conquer on the and 64? Starcraft on the sixty four. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, this is so much fun. And then after, like, <laughs> trying to get around the map or, like, having in just... I, I don't even think you were allowed to have, like, as many resources as you could have on the PC version of the game. Because I, like, would max out at a certain point and then that was it. I, I think in Command & Conquer, um, you couldn't even... Ama- like you said, you couldn't amass that much money, but you couldn't... There, I think there was a cap on how many units you can build also. Yeah, that's the cartridge it. can't like, just it can't process that. <laughs> there's too much too much resources it needs. But yeah. no, that's it. Like it, they've they've tried. They've come up with some. I know they've come up with some interesting ways to to work around it on console, but they've never been able to find uh, a technique that really works. RTSs will forever be uh, like a piece. Like that will be the PC exclusive. Mm-hmm. I would have said the top down like roguelikes, like. Uh, what was it, Hades and Diablo? But I mean, Hades did pretty damn well on the Switch, and they've proven that you can kind of you can make that kind of game now for a console, and it work and it works. Hades came out on Switch. 
Yeah. Is it on any other platform? I'm sorry? Is it on other platforms? or? I'm not 100% sure if it's on anything else. I, I haven't checked, but I know initially it was, out, it was out on the Switch and I believe also PC. That was one of the... Uh, one of the ways that game had had uh, grew to popularity. Mm-hmm. Um, Hades was wow. Yeah, it was so much fun, and it was so the art style, the story, the music, everything just they just nailed it. Yeah, and I remember when and... I was watching the VGAs back in the day, and I saw that uh, as a contender for Game of the Year. I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> and because of that, I and and you, I decided to buy it, give it a shot, and I was like, yep, Game of the Year, hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> There's just so much content, so many different ways to play it, mm-hmm. and it's uh, it, it has so it, it's just a lot of fun. It's one of the first roguelikes that that gives you a unique experience every single time you play it. You'll never have the same abilities, the same weapons, same stuff other than your starting equipment. Yeah, um, but uh, so, so to go back to um, the flagship title stuff. Like for instance, do you think that the ind- the industry is heading in a direction where they're going to get rid of that? Like they're going to get rid of saying, "Hey, we're going to make this game just for this console." Like I, it, it's kind of still happening. Like you can see, like Ghost of Tsushima only came out on PS4, and they have zero intentions of porting that to PC or anywhere else. Like it's it's a it's a PlayStation exclusive, and that's it. I think. Yeah. Um. So, so it, it clearly still exists. And Nintendo, Nintendo will not let go of anything. It's like, this is ours? Fuck off. Yeah, no, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I doubt that'll ever happen. Yeah. Like, especially since, like, they like the way that their mascot is going. They like having full control of it. I mean, look at the... Uh, what's it? The first Mario movie compared... Like, I don't know if you saw the new trailer for the new Mario movie. I, I didn't. It, uh, it came out today, right? Or yesterday? I, I think it came out today. Yeah. It either today or yesterday, but I, I saw I saw it just last night, uh, just that tonight. Okay. It, it it looks pretty neat. It's looking pretty good, and compared to the first Mario movie, which had uh, hey John Leguizamo was the shit, yo. <laughs> he was hilarious as Luigi Mario. <laughs> Man. I still I still love that word. They if that that is the the first time I believe that was the first time they legitimately got their names. But but anyways, that, that's besides the point. Are trying to get at the second they like they wanted to try and test the waters, come out with a Mario movie, and then ever since that they have not touched the movies. They have not let go of their their characters to like anybody else for the longest time. Mm. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So, so they basically they have a PTSD from lending out their characters to, to, to yeah, third basically. party. <laughs> because I, I think... yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, the the reason why I'm asking that question is because, <clears throat> do you think that if if we were to get rid of console exclusives, uh, it'll end the console wars? It's over. Uh, I don't think so. I I don't think they'll they'll ever really get rid of some console exclusivity because like, you need to have a reason to go out and buy a PlayStation, or you need to have a reason to go out and buy an Xbox. Mm-hmm. Like, what's gonna deter you from getting either one of those besides like maybe the monthly. Uh, the online services that either one has. I don't know what Xbox has for theirs, but I, I, so far I like what PlayStation offers with PS Plus and free games and all that. So and if they they would have to give you some really good online options. But as far as uh, straying away and... Uh, not straying away, but getting away from console exclusives and just making it for everyone else to buy, I, I don't think they would get away with that. There, it's always nice to have a little bit of that friendly competition amongst amongst the consoles just as long as it isn't <clears throat> like it's been for i don't know the past 15 years 10 to 15 years i'd say yeah but i remember like, we experienced like the worst of it at some points you know like the consoles um the console wars like in the sense like how i remembered um <clears throat> for a while uh timed exclusives was a thing and that was that? that was when a game would come out and it was exclusive to a console for a set number of period for a set period, and then it would release on another console. <clears throat> and I remember yeah. that fucking yeah. destroyed me, man. Because I remembered, again, I, I I wasn't a PC gamer; I was a PlayStation gamer. Yeah. And uh, Splinter Cell Conviction. Oh my god, that broke my heart when I couldn't play it. <laughs> <laughs> they were they were like, nope, 
It's like it's only coming out on Xbox, and at some point it'll come out on on PlayStation or PC. Uh, no, it did come out on PC, but I didn't have PC. But at some point it'll come out on PlayStation, but we don't know when. We have a time exclusive on it. Um, so you see, like it, it's a Ubisoft game, right? And it's it, yeah. Ubisoft doesn't cater to any particular uh, console. But for like it, at, to me, it, that was like the peak of the console wars when you know um the console the, the like the 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 company like microsoft or sony or whatever would go after third party developers and say yo make your game just for me you know and and, yeah, and well, i make I mean, make it just for me for like a year <laughs> and then release it everywhere <laughs> such a dick move you know yeah no i could i could definitely see that being that right there to me is a dick move it'd be like like it would literally be like if god of war just came out for Xbox, and then they're like, "Oh yeah, we'll we'll give it to PlayStation afterwards," you know. Especially as like the, the, it originally it, that it originated on the PlayStation. Yeah. But um, well, frick, I was gonna say something else. Um, I, I it it completely slipped my mind. Go ahead, go ahead. I, <laughs> no, yeah. it's all right. But yeah, I remember that was that was the peak of the console wars, and that's when I realized like, oh wow, this is. This is getting quite bad right now, and I, at the time, I, I have to admit, hundred percent, I, I, I bought into it. You know, I was a Sony fanboy, hundred percent. Yeah. You know, hundred percent. And uh, now I'm like, I don't. I, I said to myself, why did I pledge allegiance to any console? I don't even know why I did that. You know, it makes no sense. Um, yeah. And uh, I think it's starting to boil up again because, like I said. Um, it's not, uh, you're starting to see more games released on multiple platforms. There, 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 there's less exclusives coming out. They clearly still exist, but it's not as rampant as it was before. Flagship titles are slowly starting to dwindle in my opinion. But what, yeah. I, what I'm seeing now is these companies, uh, maybe, maybe not Nintendo, but like, um, spe- yeah, I, specifically I like- Microsoft and Sony. They're just running out and buying developers left, right, and center. You know? Yeah. Like, am I mistaken in, in remembering or thinking that uh, it was Microsoft who bought Activision? Yeah. Well, that's that's huge, man. That's... <laughs> I mean... Yeah. You would think that technically means, how, okay, well, Call of Duty is now a Microsoft-only title. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> I remember. I remember. I remember for the longest time they were putting up signs at like WalMarts and whatnot, being like, "Be careful in buying your 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 COD PS4 game because we don't know what's gonna happen with COD and PS Play, well PlayStation in general." Really, that happened after the merger, or when? Uh... Like basically, when there was talks about. I don't know if it was real or if it was just people throwing up memes, but I remember seeing a lot of like people throwing all throwing that out for the longest time, mm-hmm. saying that. There was that uh, to be, be careful in buying your uh, any COD related games for your PlayStation console because if this merger ends up happening and they shut down, I, I don't I don't think that they would. It'd be kind of stupid for for Microsoft to take that away because it's always been on both. I, I'm pretty damn sure it's been on both consoles for the longest time and PC. Uh, I I don't think it would be stupid for Microsoft at all. I mean they they're just gonna profit from it. You want to play Call of Duty? Buy a damn Xbox, right? I mean, I, I know they bought it, and there, there's an agreement where that's not going to happen, apparently. Call of Duty will be released on all platforms still, mm. uh, uh, you know, for the, for, as, as far as the near future goes. Um, but th- just imagine that it, it did become exclusive to, to Microsoft, to Xbox, and that's it. You, you, you get yourself a PC or buy an Xbox if you want to play Call of Duty from now on. Like that, regardless of, of the impact and the hate they'll get, that will boost their sales, guaranteed. The only people who lose from that is Activision. Because yeah. they're ignoring an entire market rather than catering to it, which they already do, you know? So they're the ones who stand to lose from a deal like that. But it just it just goes to show you how much money they have, you know? And uh, where they can say they could just wave, I don't know, millions or billions. I don't, I don't know how much they bought them for. But um, to just wave that money in their face and say, yo, come here, <clears throat> you know? <laughs> They pull up in an SUV and roll down their window and whistle at them and wave the money. <laughs> I, f- I feel like it's like that that meme there where it's that that one dude who was like, "Hey, I am the captain now." Like that <laughs> that whole meme. That's that's basically like that's basically Microsoft right now. But to Activision. But I, I don't know if you see what I mean. Like I feel like how that is going to flare up 
flagship titles and it's going to flare up the console wars all over again. The fact that they're running out and buying all these developers left, right, and center uh, to, to, to put them in their camp. Because it, to me, it died down, but I think it's coming back and it's going to come back uh, with uh, with aggression or vengeance. <laughs> I think they're going to... The, I, I believe it... it uh, how do I put it? I think you're right. I think that the that could happen, but I feel like they're going to be picking and choosing as to which which games that they can kind of get away with. Uh, like COD, obviously, seems more like a game that like yeah, they'd rather keep that uh, cross platform. Everyone can kind of play, uh, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't think they'll they'll do that for just about every single flagship game unless they come out with more stuff like newer flagship titles. <clears throat> Yeah, like if they come up with the next, uh, I don't know, the the next um, Souls like game or or something like that, or the next kind of Halo, mm -hmm. like stuff like that. I think that those will stick to for sure being their their flagship titles because they don't really need to, like they're, they're a given. Like a Halo, a Halo is always going to be on uh, PC and uh, an Xbox. God of War, from what I could tell, is still on PlayStation. Even the uh, the Spider Man games, except for what was Miles Morales on on. Uh, oh, no, the, the Miles Morales, the Amazing Spider Man made it to PC, but much later, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't, I, I don't know if the Miles Morales one made it to PC yet. Uh, it, I think it will, but um, but no, yeah, that uh, I think it's Insomniac Studios, right? They made it. Yeah. So yeah, basically. So yeah, that's a... yeah, I, f I feel like it's. Uh, I mean, in in Microsoft's eyes, whether it stays on console or it comes to PC at one point or another, they're they're gonna be happy because no matter what, it's still one of the, they're they're touching with with either consoles or with PC. They're, it's a win win for them, no matter what way it goes. Yeah, and <clears throat> it's it's funny when you think about it, like how all these uh, companies had their had their mascots. Like for instance, yeah. like like Nintendo clearly had their mascots, like the uh, like Mario and Kirby and uh, the Pokemon franchise and everything, right? So it, it catered to that market very well by grabbing onto those mascots and holding onto them and making it their flagship titles. And so yeah. if you like, and and it it created the image for the, the Nintendo home entertainment system, right? Like if you if you bought a Nintendo, it's because you wanted that, you know. And yeah. then came along uh, PlayStation. And to me, PlayStation was like the uh, the kid who's trying to act older than he actually is. You know, he's trying to be the mature one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like, it's like, what are you playing? Oh, I'm, I'm playing, uh, you know, Star Fox sixty four. What are you playing? I'm playing Siphon Filter. You know, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, or oh, you know, like Resident Evil or whatever. You know, um, yeah, like and and. Uh, like all of the titles that were exclusive on PlayStation, um, to me they were personally. I feel like they're more mature games. You know, they're they they they, they focus a lot on story and they focus a lot on on a, a little. I would say like you know technology like developments of, of new game styles and graphics and whatnot. Um, and then you shift over. Then Xbox came into the to the frame. I think during the yeah. PlayStation Two era. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, between PlayStation Two and PlayStation Three, Xbox started uh, popping up. And um, to me, they, their titles, their flagships. I I can't like I, I didn't have one, but from what I could see, I would say they catered towards the traditional gamer, arcade games. You know. And when I say arcade games, I mean like like when yeah. I when I look at Halo, mm -hmm. I I could see like a Halo sitting in the arcade. You know, you have your gun on yeah. the screen, and it's on rails or whatever. You know. Yeah, yeah. No, um, I, I I see what you mean. It, it definitely very... catered. I found, I found Xbox always catered towards the your first person shooter and your sports game fanatics. They they had they, they had the controller set up and everything for the the console just mm -hmm. fine tuned towards that. Ever since the Xbox One, it it just you, you put like an Xbox controller in my hand, mm -hmm. and then you put a PS like a PlayStation controller in my hand and ask me to play Halo. I would take the Xbox controller any day of the any day of the week. I, I remember uh, I, I, did, I didn't own it. My cousin had an Xbox. And uh, I would always go to their house to play it just to, you know, experience Halo and that kind of stuff. And yeah. I remember the controller for the Xbox One. Good Lord, man. Oh, it was huge. You I remember a having a small animal with that, like for real. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you could definitely, you, you can maim and or kill a small infant. <laughs> <laughs> it was ridiculous. It was huge. 
but it was comfortable for some reason. <laughs> it still worked. It, it was it was a bit it was a bit huge and clunky. I remember having to go out and buy like some third party controller, but this but it once you found a good controller for it, yeah, it was it was totally worth playing uh, playing Xbox. But I think it was right off the bat, right off the bat with Xbox and their first controller, you had the thumbsticks not equal to each other, but um, opposing, like one up and one down, right? Or was yeah, the Xbox? No, the other, no, that's it. The the Xbox controller had that layout from the start. Yeah, it's like they basically did what Nintendo should have done with their sixty four controller, because <laughs> they had their D pad, like they they had that weird three pronged controller yep. with the with the joystick here, the D pad over here, and the C stick here, and then they just figured, oh, let's put another joystick over here and get rid of this little bullshit right here in the middle. Yeah, uh, and just just doing that, it made it work. Exactly. Uh, but Nintendo always does shit like that, man. Okay, so um they did <laughs> yes. it with the they did it with the sixty four controller. Um yeah. then the GameCube came out and that's when they were like, Oh, you're trying to copy your your competition, aren't you? <laughs> oh hard. Yeah. It was it was kinda glaringly obvious they <laughs> yeah. were trying to, like, <laughs> they're like it's unique. It's like that's it's pretty much an Oh Xbox Nintendo Nintendo realized just... that that dust pad was collecting dust fast. Nobody yeah, was yeah. touching it. That that D pad man um, on the sixty four, um, <laughs> and uh, after that was the Wii, right? Yeah, and after the, Wii, the the GameCube was Wii, and the Wii was just what the fuck is this? It's like it's a... it was the weirdest peripheral for like your first timer, but mm-hmm. I I'm pretty sure you know this, but it is one of the most successful consoles of that generation. Oh yeah, it is the one one and only console that sold the most and is in everyone's household. Everyone that you know, if you ask them if they have a Wii, they for sure have one. Yeah, and I think um, because you know we're complaining like about you know the lack of uh, supply for uh, PS fives and that kind of stuff. You can't find yeah. one. Um, I think that went on for a much longer time with the Wii, the original Wii. You you couldn't find one. Everybody bought them. Yeah, for a very long time, and yeah. Um, but but the controller was just really fucked up on the Wii. Well, it wasn't fucked <laughs> up. It was just like, really? Fully motion controllers? That's what you're going with with Nintendo? And then the Wii U came out, and they released this ridiculous giant pad. <laughs> um, Basically. Uh, and now you have the... Uh, oh, oh, my God. What's the name of the new console? Jesus. Switch. The Switch. Sorry. Um, yeah, where it's just like the smallest control I've ever seen. Oh yeah, it's it, like try trying to play like anything with that control. Like you, you can get by, but if I was gonna, if I had to, to play Smash Bros with either that or the full like two Moretz plugged in, all the way the two Moretz plugged in, it's there's not much space to move with that thing. You're you're very much like sitting <laughs> right on top of each other. Like you, th- this is almost how you're playing the entire time, and it's not comfortable. <laughs> So Nintendo, when it comes to their controllers, they're just, I don't know, they're just really fucked up. Which is weird, man, because the original Nintendo, the NES, to me, has the best controller of all time. <laughs> that perfect rectangle. I, I, have, I both love and hate, and like, it was a love-hate thing with me, because I would play so many hours. Mm-hmm. I, I loved it, but at the same time, the rough edges around would, like, right here would start to kill me after a while. It may, yeah. Like, right, right in over here. But when you get mad at like your sibling and you swing that thing around, oh, it was deadly. It was deadly, and that cable was long. You had range with it, man. Oh my god, yeah, I I, I miss those days. I I miss having a wired controller, but at the same time, I don't. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then the Super Nintendo came out, and the, oh my god, the controller of Super Nintendo was they they mastered it. They it really was beautiful. Did. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then after they were like sixty four, like the fuck happened. Like when do we grow a third arm? What do we what do we do to deserve this? <laughs> and I, I I remember man when I was playing games like Turok and stuff like Turok sixty four. Yeah. Um, you didn't use the uh, the joystick and it was like weird. I was like I have to hold a D pad and the C pad. Like what is this right now? <laughs> how do I re- how do I get to the trigger? Like I'm doing this, you know? It's like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it was weird, but um. Oh uh, yeah. But you know all all that to say like um how how it, it's funny how the 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 titles that were exclusive to their respective um consoles uh mm-hmm. really shaped 
the direction the consoles went in. Because to me, Nintendo will always be for the family and the kids. Xbox will always be for, like you said, the sports fanatics and and the the gamers who are. Uh, I don't want to say not hardcore, but like you know, just they just they just slap it on for good fun and that's it, you know. Yeah. Um, and then you have the PlayStation, which catered to, to me, um, heavy storytelling, um, single player games and uh, quote unquote mature games. I guess they tried to take a mature approach. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, I I find it interesting how the flagship titles catered to the console in that aspect. Uh, but yeah, um, I think it's, I think it's good that that they're going away. I want everyone to enjoy all titles, you know. And PC is is kind of uh the gateway for that right now because everyone's like, is it coming out on PC? You know, because like you said, everyone during the pandemic just went ahead and built a PC. <laughs> yeah, look, if if you build your PC out right, like the most you'll ever have to buy is just a better video card and maybe just some small upgrades here. Yeah. Like, but yeah, honestly, you can you can have a PC for a long time. I think what before this one, I had my other one for almost ten years, and I had to because my my CPU bottlenecked and I couldn't do anything else with it. <laughs> so I had, I had to upgrade. But yeah, honestly, if you if you build if you build your PC right, it can go through at least two, maybe maybe three console generations. I think with the way things now are going, it's uh, things are technology is ramping up pretty fast. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, no, PC is definitely is is definitely the more safe road if you want to enjoy possible options for for console games. Yeah, but for ease of access or like like you said, excuse me. Even though they have Uncharted, uh, God of War, Spider Man, and all that, it 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 always seems to take longer for it to come out onto PC. So if you want, well, it, like, it's kind of it's like not a time exclusive, you know. It is, but 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 to be honest, it is a more understandable one. Like I said, like look at look at what they did with Cyberpunk. <laughs> like they tried they tried to like yeah, let's build it on all consoles all at the same time. Everything we can do it, and then it just it was god awful. Yeah, and, and they like they should have fo- they they didn't focus on on building it for one console and then expanding it out. They just let's do it on PC and do everything, and then they completely screwed themselves in the foot. Like, yeah. I understand why, why building a PC, like, that's what I was saying before, building it for PC, because of the, because of all the different variables you have to deal with, it's so much more time-consuming to build something like that on a PC game mm-hmm. or on a on a PC, whereas console, mm-hmm. it, like, just because of the hardware, you, you know what you have to deal with with the hardware yeah, and your limitations, so you just build around that and then... You upgrade as you go along. And I, I remember, man, like, um, a lot of games that were fantastic uh, flopped because of that reason. Because they tried to do it on all platforms, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, I think the biggest one that comes to mind right now is uh, Batman Arkham Knight. I I, I, had, I I bought it on console. I loved it. Yeah. I thought it was so much yeah. fun. But the PC reviews at launch almost destroyed that game. People hated it. It was so buggy and "quote unquote" unplayable. I, I didn't experience it because I was playing on console back then. But yeah, apparently it was that bad. Another one was uh, Assassin's Creed Unity, which to me yeah. was the oh last. My God, yeah. yeah, it was the last good Assassin's Creed in my opinion. Um, and again, I played it on console where I didn't experience any problems. But on PC, what I was seeing, I, I saw the videos. I was like, "Holy shit! No wonder people are mad, man." And yeah, yeah no, it has to be hard. Fuel. It yeah. must be hard to develop a game on across the board for all uh, platforms. And I would hate to put that pressure on, like you know, Santa Monica who creates God of War, or Naughty Dog who makes Uncharted, or you know, um, Bungie, you know, for the next. Uh, what, what are they going to go with? Uh, I don't know, <laughs> Halo or I don't even know if they make Halo anymore, but. No, I think I think uh, what was it three four three studios bought uh, bought out Halo, right? And, and they do others. I think they're they're doing Destiny specifically. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I I would hate to put the pressure on those studios to say, hey, put your games on all platforms now, because the fact that you know 
they only have to worry about one infrastructure to build their game around and one con uh, like controller layout or uh, yeah. capabilities and whatnot. Um, I think that's what makes the games so darn good when they're exclusive. I I definitely agree. I th I think the only way around that is if like they do like basically like what they've done with God of like a like with God of War and Uncharted where they'll mm -hmm. bring out the game on console. And even if they were to like let's say do a a PlayStation and Xbox, yeah, they might have different hardware. But again, you still know what your limitations are. It's still easy to kind of make those two games on those two consoles. I would I would at least imagine. Uh, um, yeah. I I I think I think you're right, but I just feel like, like if it was like if you're launching a new IP, I guess that's that's a fair thing to say. Mm. Um, but when you have an established franchise, like for instance, when when Santa Monica went from like uh, God of War one all the way to God of War twenty eighteen, like there, there there had to have been some similarities. Like oh, we know how Sony operates. We know how they build our consoles. We know what the limitations are. We know the ins and the outs. We know the back doors. I mean, yeah. with each each console generation, I'm sure it all changed, you know? But it, there must be some kind of, you know, idea or direction when you're working with the same company all the time, I would assume. And that's that has to be a load off your mind, you know? When you're, when you're in the development process. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I think... I think I'm going back now to what you were saying, and maybe I think you're right. Like how exclusives are not going anywhere. You know, they're going to be around uh, because they're just they're just too darn good. Like you said, they sell the product, they sell the console, they sell the the, the studio, um, and uh, I think I think certain developers enjoy being exclusive because they don't have to worry about. You know, oh my God, do we have to make the game compatible for every single video card driver that exists? <laughs> it's like, yeah, no kidding. I, I wouldn't want to have to worry about that. I don't want that headache. You know. No, that's it. Yeah. So I, I think, I think they'll, they'll, they'll always be uh, exclusives. There, there's gonna be, I think, new exclusives that'll come out here and there because, like, they're, they're gonna have to test the waters with, uh, with stuff as they go along, just to like keep things fresh. Mm. But uh, yeah, I don't think exclusives will be going anywhere. No, I'm just and... really curious to see where it's gonna go with uh, with this whole, um, cats, you know, dishing out millions and millions of dollars to buy up studios, you know, to say, oh hey, uh, Microsoft owns this now. Oh hey, Sony owns that now. You know, it's no longer yeah. it's no longer buying. It's it's not like back in the day when Microsoft went to Ubisoft and said, hey, I want you to make this game temporarily exclusive. You know. It's not that's not it anymore. Now it's hey, I want you to make games just for me. <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah, yeah. It, 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 I feel like I, I don't know. I feel like it's it's going to be more ruthless now. You know? It's, yeah. It, it's kind of like um I, uh, they're probably probably waiting for like the dust to settle and like they're, like they're going to buy up whatever they're going to have to buy up. It's like okay. Now we're gonna make this thing exclusive. For now, you know, we'll we'll see what we can come up with. Mm -hmm. But I think, yeah, now they're they're gonna wait, buy up whatever they can, and then take it from there. Absolutely. Anyways, my brother, I think we've talked the talk to out of this subject. <laughs> I think so too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I appreciate you taking the time, man, of uh, speaking with me on this one today, brother. And, yeah, for sure. Uh, next time, next time, uh, we'll see. Uh, do you have any topics in mind or? Uh, I mean, um, you know, there's only two that really come to mind at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, it was either either fighters or shooters. Ooh. I know we wanted to do do one of those at one at one point or another. For sure, for sure. And fighters, I'd be curious to hear what you have to say because, yeah. Well, I, I gotta see if I can get get on. Uh, uh, fair enough. I, I gotta see if I can get on someone else uh, to come up with us. Yeah, that'd be cool. Because uh, he's like I I I've, I've dabbled here and there with with fighters, but uh, he's he's basically like lived and breathed fighting games. Yeah, and when we choose to do shooters, I might have somebody who want to join us also, a fellow uh, a fellow Tarkover. <laughs> it's so funny because <laughs> when you go. talk about Tarkov, it's like it, I feel like when a, when somebody's when I hear somebody say, "Oh, I play Escape from Tarkov," I was like, "Oh shit, bro, what's wrong with you?" <laughs> 
like I would I would hear people say I play Dark Souls, um, I play Elden Ring, you know, and I play I play all these difficult games. I'm like, oh wow, that's fucked up. Uh, it's really hard. I don't know how you do that. But when I hear somebody say I play Tarkov, I'm like, oh my god, it's like you 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 love the Hellraiser franchise, don't you? <laughs> it's just because it's like it, at least with Dark Souls, even though there's like you're still gonna get butt raped. There's still an opportunity to get your gear back in Tarkov. Like you lose your gear unless you're with buddies. You're, you're say goodbye. All that hard work it just goes out the window. Oh, absolutely! It's soul crushing, and I love it. I think it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. All uh, right, man. You take it easy, man. For sure.